Indiana University Kelly School of Business released its forecast for 2023. Now, we've asked Professor Phil Powell, Indiana University Associate Dean of Kelly Academic Programs at Indianapolis and Academic Director of the Indiana Business Research Center to join us today to talk a little bit about this report. Professor Powell, thanks so much for joining us. Now, the Fed has raised the interest rate several times now in an attempt to tamper inflation, but we just reported just a moment ago that the numbers indicate that inflation has slowed just a bit. Now, is this a sign that the Fed effort is working? Should we be happy about this? Is this some exciting this, numbers? This is something to celebrate. And in fact, the stock market celebrated today with huge gains. Um, the only way to temper inflation is to raise interest rates. Unfortunately, it's the only way through it. And so this is really good news. It's better than we expected. And it, it could portend that uh, rates will not go up as much as we thought, which means the economy will not, uh, uh, you know, react in such a ne as, as, as negatively as we expect going into 2023. Well, well, let's talk about that negative possibility. You know, a lot of people are fearful of a recession. Um, how likely would that be if we don't continue these rather good numbers that we're talking about here? How likely would a recession be? So it's about 50-50 optimistic, pessimistic. The optimistic scenario is that we have a soft landing and we grow about 1% in 2023. Typically we grow two or 3%, so it's just sort of a, a slow year. The, the pessimistic scenario is that we, we really take a hard hit and that the economy shrinks about 2% next year and that unemployment goes up about two points. But the news today suggests that the optimistic scenario is more likely. That is great to hear. Consumer spending is key to avoiding a recession. Your report talks about a big contrast between consumer spending, between goods and services. Talk about that and why that's so important. Absolutely. So during the pandemic, households saved a lot of money, either through government. They have, they got a lot of, there were a lot of government assistance. And also folks were just, just were more uh, conservative in their spending. Well, now they're starting to spend that money. And the good news is, is that as house, the, we expect households to, spend, to continue to spend that money, to continue to keep the econ economic activity high, high in spite of these high interest rates. And if that occurs, then we're going to have this soft landing. And the good news for Indiana is that means households continue to buy manufactured goods. And as you know, especially around southern Indiana and, 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 and western Kentucky, you know, big manufacturing base. Um, that's good news for the regional economy also. You know, one thing we've heard from a lot of the manufacturers in our area that so many employers are dealing with a shortage of labor. You know, I think your report said something like three million people uh, shortage. Do you see that easing over this next year? And how will that affect the growth? So, you know, traditionally, uh, we consider un normal unemployment at 5%. Right now, at least Indiana's running about uh, 3%. So uh, that would be true for, for, for the greater Evansville area also. So uh, even if we're having a recession, our models are showing that the impact on job loss is gonna be much less than, than usual. Um, now, a, a recession will allow employers to sort of breathe a little bit. It will, it will ease the labor shortage just a tad. But if you lose your job because of this recession, you know, that's catastrophic for anyone. So it's, it's two sides of the same coin. But labor will continue to be uh, scarce. Um, folks are not coming back into the labor force like we want for, for a number of different reasons. Firms are just gonna have to adapt to the fact that it's just gonna be permanently harder to get workers. And that requires a change in business strategy, a change in business decision-making, and creating your workplace the best place uh, for folks to come, wake up every day and come to work. And, you know, it's funny because we hear almost like two sides of a coin. We're hearing, you know, on one hand, uh, some places are struggling. On the other hand, we just heard, you know, Kentucky talking about this unbelievable growth in companies coming into the state. How do you explain that? Almost two sides of a coin going on in what many of us hear every single day as being, uh, you know, a tough economy, bad inflation, you know, really negative. So the good news is, is that if we have a recession, it's going to be very mild compared to what we have in recent memory which was the economic contraction of 2020 during the, the, the pandemic, the financial collapse in 2008. So the, the worst thing that can happen in 2023 is a slight shrinkage in economic activity. Indiana and Kentucky are both great places to do business. Um, and they're, they're prime for companies, especially those that are reshoring, 
that are re reorganizing their supply chains because of instability abroad. So the good news is that both Kentucky and Indiana are, are if we do have a recession, are going to be, the, the negative impact is going to be a bit blunted because of a lot of the advantages that both states offer. And growth continues to be strong, employment continues to be strong, and that explains the governor's announcement of some strong tax revenue uh, in, in, in gotcha. Kentucky, and the same thing is true in Indiana. And that sets us up, it sounds like that sets us, well, uh, sets us up well for the future as well. Now, what is your advice to the average homeowner, though, who is sitting here at home and every day they hear all the news about inflation? How can they prepare themselves to um, make it through this next year? So the good news is, is that inflation will continue to fall. Um, all the indicators suggest, and especially that news today, that by the time we get past the first, by, by mid-year next year, inflation should be a little bit more uh, uh, normal. So obviously if your household, you want to be more, pay more attention to your budget, maybe substitute lower cost items when you would have higher cost items. Um, it's just a time to sort of, of, of tighten up a little bit and, and just sort of survive, get through the next uh, three to six to nine months. That's the longest that this, this economic retrenchment is going to last. The good news is, is that this, these economic corrections should get us to a nice cruising altitude as we enter the second half of 2023. And then households can start to be, you know, as, as spring comes, you can start to uh, lighten up a little bit, uh, not be so tight. And then expect a, a pretty good, a pretty good, a pretty good economic run once we get through this. Interest rates going up, they'll come down. Inflation will come down, and we'll get more to a normal pace for our economy by the end of next year. From your lips to God's ears, I hope that all happens. Thank you so much for taking the time today to talk with us, Professor Phil Powell, IU Kelly School of Business. We appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you.